Hi, my name is Ian. I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Flash Forge Finder. And to start off, I'm going to show you how to turn it on and off. Uh, starting on off, once everything's plugged in, or the connection, you'll go ahead and turn the on switch on. Back around, you'll have a little button here next to the front screen. One time, and it is ready to go. Once your machine's turned on, you're ready to load your filament. So we have our loader back here. You can just go ahead and pull it out. There's a little spring on top here. You'll load your tube in. And now it's time to pull your filament out. You want to unspool it, make sure it's not holding on to anything on the spool. And then let make sure it's going in curving around this way. Right. Load it into the hole up top here. And you can continue to load the filament out until it comes out of the other side. There we go. It's through to the other side of the tube. So we can go ahead and slip this whole thing back in. Now we'll go to the machine. Go to our tools. In tools, we have filament, and we will get ready to load it. All right, now it's gonna heat up. It's gonna tell you the temperature down below, and it is gonna go all the way to 220 degrees Celsius. So we're just gonna wait for it to get there. Okay, once our machine's heated up, it's gonna say loading again. Once it's 100%, you can go ahead and put your filament into the top hole on the, the top of the extruder right here. You just go ahead and gently insert it, and the machine will start pulling it on its own. You're gonna to wanna to wash the bottom, because once it starts coming through on its own, it means you're ready, and you can go ahead back to the screen up top and hit done. Now your machine is fully loaded and ready to go. You are ready to do a print. So to get started printing a 3D object, we're going to need an STL file. Uh, there's a few different ways we can get those files. Either you can create your own in a 3D design program, such as Tinkercad, or you can just take one directly from Thingiverse, which is essentially a Google for 3D print files. So that's Thingiverse.com. You can just go ahead and search an item like dog. We'll go ahead and just pick this one here, nice and easy. Download all files. All right. And now we'll be able to pull that object up in FlashPrint, the program we use to make an item ready for 3D printing. And boom, we have a 3D print STL file ready to go and ready for printing. So for printing, we're gonna we wanna make sure we have our flattest end on the bottom. This dog is standing on flat feet, so that's probably a good place to start. Once we have that, what we wanna do is add supports. So everything uh, hanging off the ground is not gonna have anything holding it up. So we need to make something to hold up those parts, such as the undercarriage or the face. So we'll go here to supports, we'll click auto supports and that will automatically generate some supports for our object. Now for supports, we have two different options. We have the tree ones you just saw, and then we have our linear ones. Really, it's a good choice for either one. It just depends on your object. This one, I'm gonna do linear because there's a lot of overhang. And now we have our support structure. So now we have a file ready and supports put on it. We're going to get our, re our print ready to be sent to the printer. So what we do is save it to a junk drive. That's the easiest way to get the print done. You'll save it to a junk drive, plug that directly in the machine and go from there. So we're gonna hit print. We are going to enable a raft. That's gonna give a nice flat base all the way around the print. So it's gonna hold the feet down, hold the supports down, make sure everything stays flat on the ground. Uh, we're gonna choose a quality. 
uh, so that's low, standard, high, and hyper. Pretty much self-explanatory, low is gonna be thicker lines, lower quality, less good looking, hyper is gonna be very thin lines, everything's really close together, high quality print. It's like a nice factory made piece of plastic. So for this one, we're just gonna do standard. Standard's usually good quality. Supports are enabled, we have our supports, and PLA is the material we'll be using. So we can go ahead and hit OK, and save this to our junk drive. And now our 3D print is ready to be taken to the machine. We have our estimated material and our estimated time, a kind of a view of what the print will look like. And it's good to go. So preparing the build plate, we're gonna go ahead and use a little bit of glue stick to help the adhesion with the, from the, the print to the surface. A lot of times the surface, the plastic wants to warp up Using a little bit of glue stick before that will usually always prevent that warping. So we're going to go ahead and just put a thin layer of glue stick right where our print's going to lay down. All right, now that we're done creating our file on the computer, we're going to move back over to our, our machine with our junk drive. And go ahead and place the junk drive into the side of the machine here. All right, we're going to go to our screen. Click build. We'll click the USB button and see we have our dog.gx file right up here up top. Go ahead and select it. It's going to tell us how long it's going to take and we can hit build. Now the machine's going to heat up and get the print started. Right now our machine is building the wrap, which our model will sit on top of. And here we have our print at 29 minutes. As you can see, the legs are just starting to finish up and we're working on the torso now. Right, this will be our print with six minutes left to go. As you can see, we have most of it there. Just finish the last little pop part from the tail and the head. All right, so now we have our finished product. Build time is one hour and one minute. All right, so the PLA cools as soon as it comes out of that extruder there, so we are good to pull our print right off of the platform. You can go ahead, this is a taller one, so it'll be easier. A lot of times if you do some very flat things that you can't easily pick up and grab, you'll need to take an X-Acto or some credit card, something you can slip underneath it to pry it off of that thing. Um, and a little rubbing alcohol works really well for that as well. And get the leftover bits of our rat off, raft off to clean the plate. And again, that's easier to do with an X-Acto knife or credit card or something you can scrape it off with. And we have our finished product, the supports and all. Supports, you can go ahead and just take those, rip them right off. Everything wrapped and all should be easy to pry off. Get all the little bits. You may have some leftover little pieces of plastic here and there. You can always take an X-Acto knife or some sandpaper and cut or rub those off. Here's our 3D print. Nice and strong too. All right, once you've removed your plate, we can go ahead and clear off our build plate even more. It's real easy to remove, it just slides right out. We'll go ahead and take our leftover pieces and just slide them off. Go ahead and slide our build pack right back in. So if you are planning on changing filament colors, or if you happen to run out of your filament, there's a process for taking out the old filament and putting a new one in. Um, if you're just planning on using the machine again later that day, or do another print, or 
plan on packing it up and using the same color another day, you won't need to do any unloading. You can go ahead and just leave the machine how it is, fully loaded, no issues there. But if you are ready to unload, you can go ahead and go to your tools, go to filament and unload. And then from there, it's gonna to continue to heat up to where you can pull out the filament. We'll take about 30 seconds to a minute to heat up. All right. Now that our extruder is all heated up, the filament will start pulling itself down a little bit here at the bottom just to clear out what's inside. Then we can go ahead back to the top here and we'll have a little spring here on the left side of the head. You can go ahead, right over here. There'll be a little tiny spring. All right, we can go ahead and just push that spring down, pull our guide tube out, and then here with the filament, we can just gently pull it out. And now you are all unloaded and ready to go. All right, now when you're changing, if it's empty, you can go ahead and check your spool. If it was empty, you can go ahead and just pull the little remaining parts out, slip the filament out of the hole in here, and you're ready to put a whole new one in. And now that we're done with our machine, we're going to go ahead and power it down. You can go back here to your main screen, click the main button. Sure power off. Yes. All right, everything shut down, fan shut down. You can go ahead and turn the on switch off in the back over here. And you're good to unplug. And when you're done with your flash drive, you can go ahead and just pull that out and put it somewhere for safekeeping. All right, so that's how to use the Flash Forge Finder. Uh, you can make yourself a nice little Brutus here. Uh, I'm Ian Casper with the Osceola Library County System, and thank you for watching.